Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my FlossTube channel. Today is Sunday, February the 5th. I was going to say 6th and I went, it's not the 6th, it's the 5th. And it's an okay day today here where I live in Alberta. And um, yesterday was a beautiful, sunshiny, brilliant, like had to have the sunglasses on uh, to do any kind of driving kind of day. You know, for February, lovely temperatures. I think the high yesterday was plus eight degrees Celsius. And today it's still relatively warm. I think the high today is about plus six. A little bit chillier, but still, you know, decently above zero and gray. I was really hoping it was gonna be a sun sunshiny day because it probably would have meant we could have been out in the, in the sunroom, but it's a gray day, so it didn't work out so well. Anyway, uh, thank you for stopping by. This is a channel about cross stitching and the stitching that I've done over the past week. Uh, so if you are a new viewer, thank you for uh, spending some time with me. And as always, many, many thanks to those of you who come back regularly and catch up with me. Uh, okay, I remember to do the notes about questions uh, and comments from last week's video. So Jay made a comment. Um, he gets up at 5.30 in the morning and gets about 90 minutes of stitching in before he starts his day, which if you're a morning person, that sounds like a great option. And I get that it means you can be productive and you're starting your day off well. For a night owl like myself, yeah, 5.30 is not a good time for me. <laughs> if I'm up at 5.30, it's because I've got to do something really egregious at work at some ridiculous hour. Yeah, 5.30 is not, not my best time. Anyway, I'm a night owl. I'm much better at night. So I'm really glad it works out for you. That sounds like a really bad way for me to start my day, but only because I'm a night owl. Um, Desiree left a question for me about um, the Edmonton Stitching Retreat. Um, Desiree, I don't know if you've gotten your answer to that, but if you go on to Facebook and look for the Stitch and Stash Edmonton, um, there's a group that should come up with that. Um, I think you have to apply to get into the group. I don't know if there are any spots left, um, but you can reach out to the admin for that group and um, get the details about whether or not there's any room left in there. Um, I can give you the dates. It's June 22nd through 25th at the Fantasyland Hotel in Edmonton. And then Lisa, the lovely Lisa, who traveled all the way down from Edmonton to come to Stitching at the Library. So thank you for leaving the comment about, because um, she knows I have a thing about safety and roads and she was down on, you know, a weekend when the roads were necessarily the best. So she did leave a comment to say that the roads were good on the way home. So Lisa, thank you for letting me know. I felt like it was probably gonna be okay, but you just never know. Welcome to, I always, anyway, this is for people who don't live here in Alberta, this isn't gonna make any sense. But my joke is either side of Red Deer is where, like to me, Red Deer is the changing points. You can have great roads from Calgary up to Red Deer and then potentially awful roads from Red Deer to Edmonton or great roads from Edmonton to Red Deer and awful roads from Red Deer to Calgary. Um, I've experienced that myself. Um, so I just sort of go, Red Deer's my spot where it's like, it could have been great to a certain point and then potentially been not so good. But thank you for letting me know that you got home safely. I actually really did appreciate that. Now, she did leave me a question about, um, uh, so I had brought a light with me to the library get together and she wanted to know, she's like, can you give me the one minute synopsis about the light that I was using? Um, so I brought it uh, here to show you and I think I've shown it on, on the channel before, but so the one that I took to the library was my Daylight Halo Go. So it is um, rechargeable. There's a, a cord that plugs in here that I, I use to recharge it. Um, it. I have the version that has a magnifier. It's got the LED lights. Whoops, too, too bright. 
So multiple levels of brightness, right? So you can have it really bright, medium bright and off. Um, but there's my, my magnifier. Um, so it does pack up very, very, uh, packs up very slim. Um, so I, I take this one, I go to the library. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It really, I, it depends on the day. It depends on, I don't know, how I'm feeling. It depends on what stitch count I'm using. Um, so I got, I will say, I got mine off of Amazon and I got a, <laughs> I'd seen it being talked about elsewhere and this is a, I would say this is not your most economical option. It's a fairly expensive lamp. I found an amazing deal on Amazon at some point. I don't know how I stumbled across it, but I just kind of looked at it and went, <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm taking the plunge because I don't think I'm going to see a price like this again. Um, so that's why I got it. I do like it. I like it because it's very, very portable. It's very slim. I can charge up the battery before I go to the library. It's never conked out on me the whole time I've been there. Um, so I think from that perspective, it's really good. Um, you know, and it gives me the benefit of a light plus a magnifier if I need it. Um, when I went to StitchCon and I was traveling to Cincinnati, I did not take this. Um, there is a video, uh, like if you, if you just on my channel search for StitchCon, there's a video that's called, what did I really take to StitchCon? And it shows you what I took. I did take a light with me. It was a battery operated light. Um, and there were a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, um, I was, I was only traveling with carry on luggage and as small as this is, this takes up room and I wanted to have as much room for shopping and all the good stuff coming back. Um, so the battery one that I took with me was a lot smaller than that. It was battery operated. If something happened to it or it got lost or 27 things happened to it, I wasn't going to care. Um, given the price of this one, I care more about this one. So, you know, taking it to the library, I don't care because I'm there the whole time. Um, at StitchCon, because um, I knew that I would be leaving the room to do shopping at the Annex or go off to the Keepsake store or 27 other things, I just... Not, not that I think that, that stitchers are by nature, you know, uh, at risk of it being uh, stolen from me, but I just, anyway, given the price of this and how much I paid for it, I was like going, I'm not taking this on the retreat. Lots of people were there. Nothing got stolen from the room. It was, you know, it's me being me. Um, but when I went to that, to uh, the StitchCon one, I took a different light and used it. So like I say, if you go back and do find that video what did I really take to stitch con um, it will show you the light um, there are other I have other lights um, in my in my repertoire um, that are portable it all depends on whether or not um, you need to have something that is um, battery operated Right, so the nice thing about this one is this can go for many, many hours and on the rechargeable battery. Um, the If there are plugins available at the retreats that you're going to, there are, there are more economical options. There are aught lights, there are day lights that are plug-in ones that are smaller, portable, but they do plug in. Um, so those are some options as well. So again, it depends on it depends on the price point price point you're looking for. Depends on whether or not you need something that's battery operated or whether you can plug it in. Um, I don't know enough about what the setup is for the retreat, uh, certainly for Edmonton, as to whether or not there's going to be plugins there. But anyway, any other questions? Just reach out to me. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to show you the one that I took with me to StitchCon because I think it's sitting here in the cabinet beside me. I think that's where I put it back but I'm having that moment going where did I put that when I got home anyway uh, so I do like it but um, like I say um, 
I have this because I found a really, really amazing deal on it. Um, if it weren't for that deal, I don't know that I would have, I don't know that I would have this, but that's me and my personal price points. All right. Uh, thank you to those of you that left comments about my finish of Twilight Star. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I was going to make a note. I still have that note going. Find out what year uh, the copyright is on that one to see just how long it's probably been sitting in my stash. But yeah, it's a really, yeah, I think it's lovely. And I'm, I'm really glad that um, I brought it out and have finished it. Yes, I know, no, I need to turn it into a fully finished object, but that day will come. All right, and with that, let's get into my stitching over the past week. Uh, so, as always, I'm going to start off with my alphabet uh, chart that I'm doing, working on this year. This is Spring ABCs by Little House Needleworks. I am stitching this on a 28 count Star Sapphire Jobelin. And so there's uh, where I've gotten to. I'm not necessarily using the called for colors. They're thematically similar, um, but if you check in the notes, it will tell you the colors that I'm using. So the new color that I've added is this blue. It's looking a little dark on camera, a little darker than it is in real life. Um, this is not the called for blue. I think the called for blue is um, classic color works stormy night and I did have stormy night in my stash but I looked at it and I went mm, it for me it didn't go with my color palette and again hand dyed flosses they can change 27 other things um, so the one that I had in my stash didn't work for me the funny part when I came to work on flowers I pulled four versions of blue and so I got to spend some time playing around with it before I made my final decision. So, so far I'm, I'm okay with my choice. Um, I had a moment, um, so why have I, why did I start my G here? Um, it's technically because, you know, because my goal is to finish one letter a week and I'm a little bit ahead, but in the F, there's the beginning of sort of the stem that comes down into these plants here. And because it sort of trails down here past the G into the H, I didn't want to start working on it. So I figured if I did the G, it would make up for the stitches. So I could say I'm effectively, I finished a whole letter. Um, technically, so today is my day to work on this. We'll see uh, how much I get done. So my minimum that I need to get done for myself is to get um, the G done, which is gardens. Um, but I would, as usual, it's me. I would like to finish gardens and then start working down into the H and probably getting, I'm hoping, a decent chunk of H done. Anyway, this is coming along really well. Like I say, this is stitching up a lot faster than sampler stitches. Um, I looked at this. I looked in the app when I was working on it and I think, uh, where's my book? I can tell, I can probably tell you this. Um, as of last week, I was at 22.2% complete. So, <laughs> So given that this is, you know, my, I'm working on my alphabet thing this year, um, if by the end of January I'm at 22.2%, I think I've got a decent shot of being finished well before the end of the year. Don't worry, I've got another alphabet one planned um, to follow it up. Um, but yeah, so it's coming along. I like how it's working out. Uh, you will also notice that I have broken down and I have now uh, trimmed it off of the um, blanket sized piece of fabric I had before. I'm firmly committed to this color way for the fabric for this particular choice. So it's all, all ready to go. So there is my 
uh, spring ABCs. So I worked on that on Sunday, which meant I still had a couple of days left in January, but all of my January projects that I had set for myself were accomplished, which gave me a glorious two days to work on an older whip. So the one that I pulled out was um, Celtic Snow by Northern Expressions Needlework, which I started last year. I think this, yeah, I think this is the last year start. I am stitching this on a 28 count Midnight Tryst Jobelin by Fabrics by Stephanie. And if you've been here for any length of time, the fact that I'm saying it's Jobelin is actually a critical piece of information. Midnight Tryst on Lugana comes out looking very, very purple. Um, but, so my goal for myself was to get um, a thousand stitches in. And so what I got accomplished, let's move my needle minder out of the way. So I had previously, these two parts, the snowflake and further down, all of that was completed before. So what I got accomplished was these top three points and the four snowflakes in between. And my goal for myself was to put in a thousand stitches, which was a little bit aggressive, I'll give you that, because I only theoretically had two days to stitch on this. And um, at the end of Tuesday night, I had put in 899 stitches. So I had not made my goal. And I decided I was okay with that because I would bring it out on February the 1st. And, you know, because in my head, I said to myself, you only have 101 stitches to go to get to your, to make your thousand stitches. And, you know, that'll be no problem. And once I was doing that, I needed to do a little bit more because I didn't want to leave... Uh, these two. I would have stitched these two and I it's like I just wanted to get the rest of these snowflakes in. So I finished those up so I spent more time, all of my stitching time on the Wednesday evening went to Celtic Snow and I ended up with a little over 1200 stitches that I put into that. Now the next step it's interesting because I was looking at this. I had my grand plan about what I was going to work on next. Because in this design, everything else in here that you see in the center part is a specialty stitch or B. So in my head, I was like going, okay, so I've done all of the cross stitches. I was going to come out and do this outer border here around it. Except that that's all specialty stitches and beading. And in the instructions, it does say, now you can always do whatever works for you best, but in the instructions, it says that they found it much, much easier to put the beads in first and work the specialty stitch around it. Which then that meant it immediately kiboshed that I can get this uh, um border completed anytime soon because all of this outer border is just regular cross stitch so I need to do all of that before I start my beading adventure. So the next time I bring this out I have decided that I'm going to start filling in all of the specialty stitches uh, in here because I'm going to need these specialty stitches at the tip to help me do the counting to get to these specialty stitches so I can then hit the border and start working on that. So that's my game plan for the next time this comes out. I'm happy with my progress. Um, you know, so for three days, um, I'm very pleased that I've got, um, you know, so all of the cross stitching for the center part is now complete. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with that. It was nice pulling it out making some progress. Um, this is this is going to become part of the discussion as we get into the topic. So 
so it will come back. And then once I got that completed, of course, you're all expecting that you know what the next thing was. We're in a new month, so my new monthly chart got started. So this is my series that I'm working on for this year, which is um, the Monthly Quakers by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. So this is my uh, February Quaker. I am stitching this on 40 count white Verdal. I have made the, I don't remember because I wasn't paying any attention as to whether or not in the, um, in the models for these, whether the, whether she had them stitched all on the same fabric, doesn't matter. I've decided that for my purposes, all of these, they're all going to be stitched on 40 count white for it all. Uh, so I've had a very good start on this again. So I started working on this on Thursday evening. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, this is where I'm at. This, I have reached 47% in those three days. So I feel like I've had a really good start. Uh, this I'm using the, uh, the call for the pinks. I'm using the called for classic color works. This is C shall C Shelley and the darker one, which is this, 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 and this, um, is strawberry parfait. I struggle with that only because every time I look at the tag, the song Raspberry Beret starts going on in my head. Hey, they're both fruits and they rhyme, but anyway, that's why I had to think about it because I look at my, in my head, I go, Raspberry Beret, and I go, that's not the name of the floss, that's the song that you sing when you look at the floss tag. The floss color is Strawberry Parfait. Anyway. Now, the green that is called for is Joshua Tree, which I do have, but it's too, it looks, you know, decently green on here. Um, the Joshua Tree that I have is very brown. The DMC equivalent is 471. I think, anyway. Um, so I'm going to dive, I'm going to dive into some options to decide whether... Okay, so the answer is I'm probably not going to use Joshua Tree, and I'm probably not going to use 471. I'm going to choose something else. Uh, so take so stay tuned next week for um, what that's going to be because I haven't made that decision yet, which is why I focused on all of all of the pinks. But I don't know. I thought 47% over three days was a pretty good start on that. So my expectation is that by next week that this piece should be completed. Which means my, my monthly plan is going well. And that is all the stitching that I've done this week. Um, I do have stash acquisitions this week. made a trip out to uh, the stitching corner. They had brought in a chart uh, for me that I'd asked them to. Um, this is a chart that I know that, um, I don't remember who it was, but I, I saw it on Instagram that somebody was doing a stitch along. I looked at it, of course, and went, there's no way I could possibly participate in a stitch along, but I still wanted to order the chart, which is what I did. Um, so this is by Blackbird Designs. It's called Raise a Glass of Cheer. And it says, Raise a Glass of Cheer for the Beginning of a New Year. I thought it was really interesting because it's a New Year's related um, design, which, you know, there are some. I've got one other one in my stash, but it's not a topic that you necessarily see come up. And I figured once I stitched it, it would be... Um, You know, you could put it up sort of like after Christmas and for, you know, several weeks into January. And, you know, it's still the beginning of a new year. Um, so I had pulled off of, uh, gone looking online to see what the fibers were for this because I'm conceptually planning on kidding up. I don't know where it fits into the five-year plan yet. Um, it uses Gentle Arts, I think, 
three, six, six colors of Janel Arts. I had three of them in stock. I needed to get three of them. Um, and at the stitching corner, I managed to get one more of them, which is old red paint. And it says you need two skeins for this. Where did that white piece of paper go? There we go. All right, so there's, you know, there's old red paint. And here are the other ones that I had in my stash for this. So that's the beginning of the palette. Uh, these two are still up for debate. This is looking very yellowy uh, on camera. This is, it's showing up more yellow than it is in real life. Um, whether or not I'm going to stick with this, this one is apple cider. That one might get switched out. Uh, this is for the stems of the flower of these flowers and then the darker brown is for the pot so I I did have so these are the ones that I had in my stash uh, so I already had picnic basket I don't know that I'm going to use this for the pot this might get switched out for something that's maybe probably in the gray family y you've met me right anyway I've got them stay tuned but um Certainly these ones I'm fans of. I think those will be lovely. So that is my, um, that's my Raise a Glass of Cheer by Blackbird Designs. And while I was there, I was looking at some other things and um, was looking at the Dinky Dye Silks. And had a little bit of a chuckle because I was looking at this one color and I went, I, I've got to have this in my stash, right? Like this is, this is a very me color. I've got to have that. And thank heavens I have my X-Stitch app. And so I went into my X-Stitch app and looked it up and I didn't have this color. And they had several in stock. And so I bought three skeins. This is Dinky Dye's 21 Dane Tree. Which, sorry, I'm just trying to get the... So it's sort of a, a green, a blue-green with a periwinkle color. Now, you're going, why did you get three? And I specifically got three because as I've looked at, you know, sort of over the past year, as I've been looking at things and putting things into the five-year plan, I will say that for several of the monochromatic charts that I have in my stash, um, or things that I would, thinking about stitching with as a monochrom, well, using one, one thread, this is not necessarily monochromatic, but if I were using one thread for them, generally they're needing about three skeins so I figured while they were there and they had the three skeins in stock I would get all three of them and bring them home which means at some point down the road I will be able to pair this with something and I will have three in stock ready to go and then I was looking at the fabric I have no business looking at fabric but if we're in a store, don't we all go and look at the fabric anyway? So I went and looked at the fabric and I spied with my little eye something that I was like going, hmm, interesting. Now, originally, and the first piece I saw, I went, that's maybe a picture of this plus. And I've got my X-Stitch app and I'm feeling decently good about uh, the fabrics in my X-Stitch app. So I'd be able to tell whether I had any of it. And then I got there and I looked at the tag and went, okay, it's not. It's not Picture This Plus at all. So um, cro the Crossed Wing Collection has a number of specialty fabrics that they do for some designs that they have done. And um, one of the ladies from the library get together, she stitched one of them and she brought it to show and it looked stunning. It was the one, it was one with sunflowers and you know, we quizzed her about the fabric and which is why I had um, Crosswing Collection, you know, recently in my mind having seen those fabrics. And in my head, 
I always thought of those fabrics as being done on linen and that you could only get them on linen. And as far as I had seen, I'd only ever seen them in linen. This particular fabric is a crossed wing collection fabric in a 28 count Lugana. And you know me in an even weave. And they had it in stock. So I bought a fat quarter of it and it came home. So I got a fat quarter of it. This particular, so it's, so it's a 28 count Lugana. The colorway is Whispering Pine. Yeah, that's not bad. I think it looks lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You know, it's a very bluey green, sort of light shading and modeling. It was everything that I, this is my kind of an over dyed fabric, which of course is why I bought it and it came home. So the, the interesting, th well, there's a couple of interesting things. The funny, th <laughs> the funny thing is I was standing at the counter uh, with this piece of fabric because they had more than um, more than the fat quarter so I needed it to be cut <laughs> there was another lady in the store and she was like where did you find that <laughs> anyway the one of the owners of the store was kind of laughing going oh my goodness there's going to be a dust up as they're fighting over the fabric I'm like no no there's we're not going to fight over the fabric I was here first and I'm going to get a piece and I'm not taking the whole thing. So there's going to be some leftover. So there's not going to be any fighting, but I thought it was really funny. It's like, where did you find that? Anyway, there's my fabric, Whispering Pines. Love it, love it, love it. Anyway, so that one was getting cut, which was great. So then I continued perusing the fabric section, which anyway like I need fabric anyway I was perusing the fabric section and then I saw this other fabric and went mm, well, what is that because now my spidey sense was up so this next piece is also a crossed wing uh, fabric also 28 count Lugana <clears throat> and this is called I'm just figuring out uh, the best way to show this this is called Starry Night. Hang on. So again, it's sort of a peri periwinkly blue and lavender with these light white flecks. So not polka dot, not, you know, you know what I mean. I'm holding it up. You can see for yourselves what this looks like. So that's my fat quarter of that one. Because um, there's always, you know, I would say that the white is a little less, it's gonna, probably gonna be hard to tell on camera, the white is a little less apparent on the reverse side. So I think at this moment, while I have no explicit plans for it, my expectation is that I'm probably gonna be doing it um, on this side of the fabric, just because the, the white is a little more noticeable. But yeah, so this is Crossed Wing Collection 28 Count Lugana Starry Night. Now, the very helpful owners, of course, said, we can bring in any color. You can go to the Crossed Wing Collection and we can bring that in for you. And they can bring it in in smaller pieces, so I'm not committing the store to having to bring in a whole bunch. And <laughs> I said, thank you so much for all your help. I'm trying not to buy fabric and you've already snuckered me for two pieces. And they just straight up laughed at me because they've known me for a very long time. So that was a totally acceptable answer. I said, yes, I wasn't aiming for fabric and was accidentally walking out with two fat quarters. Which meant, of course, when I did get home, I, of course... <laughs> went on to the website and looked at the crossed wing collection and it's and it is interesting on there because it does say that while they predominantly dye like if what they dye most often is a 28 count linen 
but they are absolutely open to dyeing those colors on different fabrics. So like I say, the thing that took me by surprise is that these were Luganas, which is, I will always take a Lugana over a linen, as long as the color is similar. And I was happy with these colors. They didn't have these colorways in linens to compare them to. So I don't know if they're dramatically different than what the linen version of those colorway what of what those colorways are but they were really lovely and so they came home because they were in the store and <clears throat> anyway so I've added a couple of more fabrics to my stash um, so yeah so if you're looking for them like I say the stitching corner um, can bring those ones in for you if anybody is interested and like I say they can order them in different counts different counts and different fabrics I did end up having a conversation with somebody else who they actually told me that they themselves had reached out to the Crosswing collection about whether or not they would be willing to dye 25 count Lugana. And they said they got a very quick response and said, absolutely. So anyway, putting that out there in case anybody wants to go look at some Crosswing collection options. Um, yeah, so those are my stash acquisitions um, that I'm gonna show on this one. Of course, while I was out there, I did make a stop at Traditional Stitches. I did pick up some stuff at Traditional Stitches, but, you know, just to spice things up, um, I'm going to show the ones from Traditional Stitches on next week's video because I'm not expecting to go out again next week. So, you know, just breaking things up. All right. And with that, okay, I've got a couple of announcements. I know I was supposed to send out that email to those people who are on my email distribution list because I had a couple of questions. I utterly failed at getting that out the door this week. So I it's on a must uh, for this week uh, to get those questions out to you. But I do have the library booked for our February get together. Um, I have the library booked for Saturday, February the 18th from 9.30 to 12.30. Um, I tried I tried to get it for so for people here in Alberta that is the family day long weekend so it may not necessarily be the best weekend for everybody but that's the Saturday I could get it booked um, I had problems getting it booked for the 25th um, of February the following week which again sent me into like I need to get my email out so people can opine on a couple of things couldn't get it booked in the afternoon, uh, so we're back. To, so that one is a morning one. So Saturday, February 18th from 9.30 to 12.30. If you're watching this and you are in the greater Calgary area and are interested in coming, just feel free to come. You don't necessarily need to let me know that you're coming. Um, we have more than enough room to add people. Um, I had someone else who was asking me about it on the weekend and... Um, you know, I have a number of, of ladies on my list that get the, the regular emails um, just so that they can. But, you know, it's it's once a month and people have lives and things and families and other obligations. So we've never had everybody attending <laughs> all at once. Um, but even if everybody on my list came, we still have room for more. We've, uh, according to what's uh, what the, the maximum number of people I can book into that room, we still have room for more. So if you have the ability to come, come. You don't need to let me know in advance. Just come. We'll be there. Um, you don't need to come for the full three hours. You can drop in later. You can come in for a bit right off the get-go and leave because you've got other things you've got to do. You don't need to commit to the full three hours. We are a very nice, uh, welcoming group of people. And, you know, fit it into your schedule the best way that you can. And as I said to Lisa, safety first, safety first. So if it turns out to be a blizzardly, snowy roads, awful week, safety first, safety first. Don't come, be safe. Um, we'll be having a get together the following month. Uh, so that's when the next one is, Saturday, February the 18th. Um, again, this, the details on that will be in the notes below. Okay, those are my announcements. I'm just, <laughs> that's my usual. I'm looking around going, yes. Which of course is gonna bring us to the topic. Um, it's February, which doesn't sound like much of a topic, but it's got a couple of things that factor in here. 
So one of the things I'm going to do is, um, you know, we are, we are in 2023, which means my 10-year planner has now been cracked open and has been worked on. Um, so I'm going to give you my stats for January because I did spend some time this week sort of wrapping up my month. Um, so I worked on, over the course of the month, I worked on a total of eight projects. And I'm only giving you these statistics because they're fascinating to me. I'm in finance. I have spent my entire working career living in the land of numbers. So now that I have the ability to actually track numbers, Yes, I used to be one of those people who said, I don't understand why people count. And the answer is now that I don't have to count, that I have an app that does the counting for me, I'm all over the numbers to the extent that I can. Uh, so I worked on an eight, a total of eight projects over the course of the month, which to me is interesting because I used to be a monogamous stitcher. Why am I not a monogamous stitcher any, anymore? Floss tube. It's all because of floss tube. Uh, so eight projects. I put in a total of 8,557 stitches, which was a really good number for me. There are people out there who stitch a lot more than me. Anyway, I don't like to, this is not a game of comparisons. There are no winners. This is what I do for enjoyment. So it was a good number for me. Um, <laughs> if you stitched more than me, that's great. If you stitched less than me, did you get stitching in? That's great. But that's my number for the month of January is 8,557. I had five projects that I started in uh, the month of January, which was the January Quaker, Twilight Star, the Jubilee Pin Cushion, the Spring ABCs, and Let It Snow. So those were the five projects that I started in the month. Um, I had three finishes in the month. So I've only added two whips to my uh, whip category. Um, the three that were finished were of course the January Quaker, Twilight Star, Let It Snow. The two new whips that I'm carrying over into February is the Jubilee Pin Cushion and the Spring ABCs. Neither of those wigs me out about adding to my whip count because I um, I'm, ex I'm hoping that the Jubilee Pin Cushion is going to get finished in February. And the spring ABCs is, it's going to get worked on over the course of this year until it gets completed. So I'm totally fine. It's one more into the whip, but I'm quite confident at this point in time that spring ABCs is going to get completed in this calendar year. So in case you're wondering what my, what my, so that's what my uh, month looks like. So for every project that I work on in the month, I use a different color. And so a different color and I put the number of stitches. Um, this is my list of projects that I worked on in the month and the total number of stitches that I put in on those individual projects. And then of course, whoops, I put the totals down here at the bottom. Sorry, I dropped a piece of paper out of the book and it's fairly critical. <laughs> Um, so I am keeping track at the front here of the front of this year, my starts and my finishes. So keeping track of those as well. So it'll be interesting to see what my number is. I was just going to sit down and count them. It's like, I'm pretty sure that when I started this, I, um, you know, last year I had a really good stitching year. Um, I believe I had looked at this and when I counted it out, I went, you should have enough room in here to put all of your starts and finishes um, without running out of room based on how much I think I can get stitched. Um, so yes, I've, I've cracked, cracked my 10 year planner. Um, all right, so that's how January went. Uh, so I do will say that I think my plan for January worked out really, really well. I feel like I've started out really strong. I got projects started and finished. I had a good stitching month. I'm starting the year out well. We'll see how it keeps up. It's like anything else that goes on. 
there will be good months and there will be potentially some not so good months that's just how life goes but January worked out really well and I'm really happy about that which leads me into so what is my plan for February well some of it you already know I'm already I'm going to be continuing to work on my my ABC sampler that I'm currently working on I'm gonna work on my February Quaker I have my pre-arranged days that I have other projects that I work on. So the 6th of every month, I'm still working on my Queen Elizabeth pieces. Um, so this uh, February, this is going to be the Jubilee pin cushion and hopefully I'm gonna get that one um, completed. Um, so February 6th is tomorrow, so Monday. Hopefully by the end of Monday, I will have that finished. The 11th, of course, is when I work on my Remember 911 piece by Just Nan. Um, and then, of course, on the 25th is when I work on my Little Bits of Christmas. So that's going to continue this. The other interesting thing about February is it is a shorter month. As we all know, there's only 28 days. Now, how does that impact me? Well, a couple of ways. One, if you look back at January, the days that I had targeted for whips was after I got my goals accomplished. And it took me, I will say, it took me a little longer into the month to get my, to get Twilight Star completed so I could work on a whip. That's just how it went. I had, I had a couple of migraine days in there, which meant, you know, stitching went out the window, which was the right call. Um, <laughs> stitching with a migraine is not a, not a good good experience um, you know so that's just how it goes still happy with what I got accomplished but it didn't leave me a lot of time to work on my whips which I'm trying to do a little I'm trying to be better about working on those um, February because it's only got 28 days I'm already short days so it'll be interesting to see how it goes and I have to make some decisions once I get my February Quaker as to what I'm really going to do next because I've got a couple of options. Yeah, I'm, st I'm still going, it's like, mm, well, I could do that. So I'm still deciding on that, but check back next week to see if I've made any final decisions. The other wrinkle that gets added into the month of February is of course, well, it's not a, of course. Lent begins on February 22nd. It's a very early Easter this year. Uh, so Lent is beginning early, February 22nd. Um, I think this is the earliest that Easter has been since I've started making floss tube. And I'm going to continue on with my plan to work on a Lent project uh, the, throughout the entire time of Lent. Now, I'm going to apologize to Gurley right now because I'm really sorry, but my Lent project this year is not Jerusalem. I'm not expecting Jerusalem to come out um, while I'm working uh, between uh, the beginning of Lent and Easter Sunday. It's still supposed to come out this year, but it's not coming out for Lent. I have a new Lent project that I'm uh, planning on working on. I'm really excited about this project. It will be fascinating to me to see how it works out for me. So um, as we get, um, so the last week in February, in case you're wondering, the topic for that week is going to be Lent stitching and my plans for Lent. Um, but I have a new project all kitted up, ready to go. It's an elderly project coming out. And I've, I've specifically picked that, pro well, anyway, there's going to be a whole a whole episode on why I've chosen that, but it will be fascinating to see if I am successful at this. I'm really hoping it works out the way that I want it to be, um, but you just never know. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to see what that is. So that's factoring in there. So once I get the Quakers done, my designated days, um, it's going to get a little bit interesting because we're short and there's a part of me that says I still want to work on on do some balancing of whips as well as um, another start and my targeted February start is a canvas work piece. Um, if you go back if you've been watching me for any amount of time um, when I originally pulled out the banquet um, by Frida's Fancy Stitching I had that moment where I was like going, man, I have not worked on a canvas piece in forever. And I like, what is wrong with me? Cause I enjoy doing it. 
So when I pulled that out, I said my goal was that I was always going to have some kind of canvas work piece on the go. Not that I'm necessarily going to work on it every month, but there needs to be one that is in process. So I completed the banquet um, last year uh, so that it took me, you know, over the course of two years to get um, that those eight charts completed. Four got finished in one year, four got finished in the following year, but it means as of January 1, 2023, I don't have a canvas work piece on the go. So my t February targeted piece is a new canvas work piece. So I'm still going, um, I could say the, the issue for me is how to balance my new start with working on whips as we're working through February. And again, part of the struggle with that this year is because Easter is so early, which means Lent is early and, and I have a, my Lent new start is occurring in February as well. So it gets really complicated in a month that only has 28 days. But yeah, I'm still going to like, so once I get the Quaker done, then I, I, my goal is to have a new start, my February start for the canvas work piece and somehow balance that with um, an existing whip that was carried over from 2023. Like I say, even as I'm sitting here, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out and what that balance is going to look like. But stay tuned, see how I work it out for myself. If you've got any brilliant suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like I say, this is <laughs> the fact that I'm even having these conversations with myself and having to make these decisions is still somewhat entertaining to myself as a reformed monogamous stitcher. And now that I have, I'm a multi uh, project stitcher on the go anyway. And with that, that's all I have for you this week. So I hope everybody's had a really great week. I hope you've had some time to get some stitching in. Um, as always, thinking of the people of the Ukraine, I'm always concerned when I hear about that Russia is planning on making a big push. I think there's already enough problems going on there. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure that the sanctions are having the effect that I would like them to have. But as I say, funnily enough, my uh, powers do not exist to solving those issues. <laughs> I can't solve the weather issues. I can't solve other global uh, issues, but thinking of them. And uh, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of the invasion. And uh, man, like I just, I, I know I say it somewhat regularly. I can't believe we're still, I'm still talking about this. I can't believe it's still going on anyway. So dear people of the Ukraine, whether you are, uh, particularly if you're living there, because this is winter time and there's a lot of damage going on to infrastructure. And the Ukraine is not, you know, warm, bomb, balmy, sunny, you know, um, equatorial zoned country. It's cold and um, as infrastructure is getting damaged, it's problematic. So absolutely thinking of the people who are living in the Ukraine, thinking of the people from the Ukraine who are not living there, but probably have friends and family that are still there, are having to adjust to living in new places, having uh, left the country, um, you know, with a fraction of what you had back home, having to adjust to all of the new things, thinking of those Ukrainians as well. I'm also thinking of all of you who are experiencing really cold temperatures right now. There's a lot of, um, like I say, don't get me wrong, yesterday was bright and sunshiny, warm, and I loved it. It was a really nice day uh, and temperature where I live, and I know that that's not the, <laughs> there are large swaths of North America that are having some frosty temperatures. So thinking of you, and don't forget my mantra is safety first, safety first, safety first. Um, so I hope you're staying inside, staying warm, and staying safe on the roads. Those are some potentially really um, bad combinations of things. So st I hope you're staying home, home, safe, warm, stitching, all those good things. So with that, as I say, safety first, safety first. 
please be safe. So I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. And I hope you're finding some time to do some stitching. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.